Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back to the channel of a sarcasm and orgasm. So, you know how it is. But before you get into the next video, make sure before you do anything that you go down, you hit that like, you hit that comment, and also you hit subscribe. So, this video he's about to get into, it was real dope, real, real interesting. I got to do my third, well, my third, yes, episode with my guest, Miss. Gail Lynn from a rate from relationship evolving. So go ahead, check us out. We had some very good laughs. I was on set. I got to sit with her. We did just amazing, amazing, amazing conversations. And we were just, you know, making it work. So we got sarcastic. We had some orgasms and it was really, really dope. So go ahead, check that out. Tune in. And you know how we do it. Let's get Sarcastic. Yes, yes, welcome everybody to another episode of Sarcasm and Orgasm. Thank you so much for listening and tuning in. So before we get started, make sure you go down to the bottom, you hit like, you hit subscribe, you do whatever you do, but make sure you get your daily dose of sarcasm. So you can get everything that's going on. Now, on today's episode, so glad, so glad that I get to sit with this person. Um, we've done two episodes together, uh, and it's because of her that I am where we're at. So I would <laughs> love to welcome my guest, and she's also welcomed me out to On Location. I would love to welcome my guest from Relationship Evolving, Miss Gail Lynn. Well, thank you for having me back. Thank we you. get to play yes, in live, <laughs> real <laughs> real face-to-face -face contact. How is that? No, it's crazy, and, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, live from the hive, baby. What else uh, can we do? Well, you know, when you told me about it, I was like, uh, no, nah, she's just playing. Because remember, when I told you about the concept, you was like, okay, I'm with it. And then you was like, well, Will, you should come out to the hive and we should do it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> 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 My little baby virgin, Will. What? No, I'm a virgin. <laughs> no, oh, sorry. Didn't mean to. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Just, just hold me out like that. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> but thank you for welcoming me. Yeah, thank you. So oh, much. absolutely. It's my pleasure to have you out and yes. have some fun and have some sarcasm, our daily dose of sarcasm mm -hmm. yes. and a little bit of orgasm. Well, you had enough of that for everybody. So. <laughs> just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes. Yeah, so how are things been going with you since we last spoke? Oh, last they word? they're going good. You know, I've um, been doing a lot of different guest appearances mm -hmm. on different podcasts and just really enjoying connecting with people and answering questions, especially about non-traditional relationships. Yes. And so I'm just having a blast because, you know, that's the whole thing. Like my message is out there. Like, let's be who we authentically are in this world. Absolutely. You know, and the relationships that we get to have, we get to choose what they are for ourselves. You know, the, the, what religion says, what our families say, all of that stuff. Like, let's reprogram some of these beliefs because there is a bigger world out there to enjoy yourself. Yeah, we're sitting in it right now. <laughs> Yeah. That is, this is one place. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that is. So, so if you didn't catch the other episodes, we are in a lifestyle club. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. <laughs> yes. Yep. We and are. this is Will's first experience. My, it probably be my last, but I don't know. I'm open to it. <laughs> you never know. Don't believe her, people. Don't believe her. I swear. <laughs> it's all on me, not her. <laughs> But no, but no, yeah, thank you. I'm glad to hear because I know we've been trying to schedule and get together and make things happen because we know things happen between life and other podcasts. So it's it's a real pleasure just to like come out here because I know when I was on my way here, I'm like, this is really happening. I think when I actually got off the turnstile and I was waiting to get picked up, I'm like, damn, I'm actually here in Phoenix about to do this. Like, I couldn't believe it. Life is real, right? Yes, life is really real. Because like I was telling you before, it's like I can remember when I was just sitting there in my hotel eight months ago, just straight recording. 
just audio, yeah. no video or nothing. Then I transitioned, and then now it's like because of the work that I have, like trying to put in consistently. I've met people such as you and other podcasters yeah. that I'm almost building network and relationships with. So it's almost That's like awesome. you don't know until you try. And yeah. I can say thank you because you've been you're maybe my second or third person that I interview with to where I've built I want to say a lasting relationship that I I enjoy. So yeah. thank you. Thank I you we so do. Much. And we have so much we fun do. together. We, do. we, <laughs> we do. really do. We you do. know, <laughs> we're uh, keeping people on their toes, that's for sure. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are. So um, on today's episode we are talking about Jealousy. Jealousy. So this is the topic I, I decided. So yes. last time, um, so the very first, if you guys want to catch up, so the very first podcast that we did, uh, I explained why I got into the non-traditional relationships. Mm -hmm. And so just as a little recap, um, what happened is my husband came to me asking me to have sex with somebody, or he wanted to have sex with somebody else, not me. He did. And so we had to navigate this whole, terri whole territory. And it went with lots of ups and downs and pleasure and, and crying and all kinds of spaces. Um, but we worked through it and we're thriving and, uh, in our own lives because we really found our authentic expression of who we are. And so that was the beautiful part of what came out of just somebody being authentic enough to really speak their truth. Uh -huh. of what they desired and so many people are afraid to speak their truth and one of the reasons is because of jealousy so we have this <laughs> and everybody looks at that it's almost like a little jealousy demon right <laughs> <laughs> Jealousy demons. Okay. <laughs> we have demons, but now the category is jealousy. <laughs> <laughs> and so what happens is, uh, you know, there's this, this, the, these emotions come up and people don't understand. They're like, no, that's mine. That's my husband. That's my partner. You can't have a piece of that's my, my partner. <laughs> that's, that's mine. That's my pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and so what happens though when we when we take that attitude in what happens is we get this attachment mm -hmm. and if you go back to even the teachings of the yogi attachment creates suffering people so whenever you come overly attached to something I guarantee you there's gonna be some suffering involved when it doesn't go your way so that's the first thing to keep in mind. So think of it like, because um, we're all autonomous beings. Mm -hmm. We are, and we don't own each other. Yeah. And so if you think of like a flower, okay, if you have this beautiful flower and you see it growing in the garden and it's thriving and it's got its nutrients coming from the soil and you just love it and it's beautiful and you just unconditionally cherish the flower just where it's at, then there's the other, the other story, right? Where you're like, oh my gosh, I love that flower so much, I gotta have it, it's gotta be mine. And so you go pick the flower, well what happens is it now no longer has the nutrients, right? And so basically, because it doesn't have the nutrients, it's gonna start dying. Because it's suffocated, it's not, it's not thriving, it's not being that authentic self. And so that's what jealousy can do when you, when you really get these attachments going on. But, and jealousy is even more than that. There's a lot of layers to it. And, and that's one of the things that I, why I do what I do is because I want people to be free. I want them to get the layers of jealousy. It's like an onion, right? It kind of smells to begin with. It kind of might make you cry, right? But if you peel back all the layers and you get to the core, there's freedom. There's freedom in that. Wait a minute, so are you saying jealousy is supposed to smell? <laughs> <laughs> well, it can smell. <laughs> okay? I'm just, I'm just asking, it can smell very stinky. I'm just asking so I can catch up and envision what's going going. But no, no. Analogies, I, well, analogies, hey, okay? Hey, hey, I'm not stupid. I'm just a little slow. There's a difference, okay? <laughs> but no, no, but I get what you're saying. And yes, um, jealousy is a huge thing, whether it be 
relationships, non-relationships, or just people in general because we get jelly, jealous or jelly, as I like to say, yeah. of things that sh- shouldn't really make us put energy into things that really don't need to. Exactly. It That's really just doesn't. it. Yeah. And there's different, like, because you kind of, you have envy, right? And envy is where you're just like, okay, you're going on a vacation and I'm jealous or I'm envious actually is the more proper term Uh to say I'm envious of you going on this beautiful vacation now jealousy is more like okay I'm going out of town my partner's at home I know their habits and their routines right and I call and they're not there and you're like wait they should be there I know their habits and routines Uh and so then what happens is this this emotion just wells up inside of you and and when that happens it's jealousy, right? Yeah. So now we have to figure out why. What What is it that's coming up? Why is that coming up? Because a lot of times it's just communication. Like if the partner would have communicated to say, hey, I'm doing this tonight. I'm going to be late. I'm not going to be in. And they called, they would have known, right? It would have totally squashed it. So a big thing to really help communication is, is, or to help jealousy is really to be in communication all the time. But how can you be in communication with someone who doesn't know how to communicate? And we've even well, talked about that. So, uh, exactly. And it, it, it's almost like it's almost one to one. Like in order to have some type of understanding, you have to communicate with that person. But we have people in this world who don't even want to open their mouth because of the fear of rejection. Well, and that's sometimes a- rejection can even cause jealousy. Jealousy. <laughs> you are right. <laughs> because, <laughs> yes, yes, it can. Because they're, they're feeling left out, right? So a lot of times jealousy will be triggered when there's some kind of threat to the core. Yeah. Okay. So when that threat shows up, like uh, a, maybe looking at another person or even a job situation or something like that, it'll trigger it and then the jealousy comes in because they feel like there's a threat towards their way of living or their existence. But what, this is what I'm saying, is what if we can actually have a relationship for truth and, and function in such a way that we're going to say, no. I'm going to be self-aware as to what is going on and I am going to talk about these things. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because when you do that and you really are, are willing to go into who you are and why those are there, like, are they belief systems? Um, you know, like belief systems that, well, we're one man and one wife, we should be married forever. Right. So that means you're mine. I can possess you, which creates a jealousy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we have, so that's a layer. Yeah. yeah, That's a layer. Uh, Belief systems are a layer. Okay. Yeah. Now we're peeling this onion. Wonderful. (laughs) We got to get back to the end. We're getting to the freedom, (laughs) baby. We (laughs) We want that freedom. Let's let's go. (laughs) Are you getting this, Dave? (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to Dave, the cameraman. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. And so, so yeah, so we've got belief systems. We've got communication. We've got envy. That's another layer that, you know, like separating out what is jealousy and what's envy. Mm-hmm. And, and so when you actually are going to say to your partner, no, I want a relationship for truth. Like I, I, this is not how I want to function where some people are just like, nope, that's my man. And you ain't fucking touching him. You know? Nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And that's, that is an attitude that a lot of people take. Uh, is it the, the best and healthiest way to do it? No, because you just created a possession. Yeah. Who wants to feel like they're a possession? Honestly, no one should. But when you become possession, it's like almost some people like that, that you're possessive over someone, that you're putting like your mind. You belong to me. You, it's, and that's, okay, there's a little bit of healthy jealousy in that. Yeah. Okay, of, who, of feeling that. Who wants that. to have healthy jealousy, though? Ooh. Like, because we all, we're all saying that jealousy is not good no matter what type of form. And if you're saying it's okay to have healthy jealousy, to be possessive over someone, <laughs> just someone, not something, and saying that you belong to me, it should not be that way, then that healthy jealousy turns into bad jealousy to where things get worse and you got a DV case on. Okay, so I'm going to tell you where jealousy is good. Okay. 
I'm listening. So jealousy is okay because it, in 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 this way is because when it does happen, it just triggered you to say, okay, what in my life is causing this that's going to allow me to grow past this. So if it does trigger, it's actually an opportunity. So I always say, never waste a trigger. Never waste a trigger. So if something is is causing you to have an emotion or have to feel something or something like that, instead of resisting it, because what you resist is going to persist. What you can reveal is going to heal itself, right? Nice. So in this space, if you're going to reveal what's actually going on inside of you, that's the point that you can start healing it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. And I, I, I agree with it because yes, you need to heal from a lot. You need to resist in order to persist. I think you said. <laughs> if you resist, it's going to persist. Yeah, yeah, okay. Resist, persist. Um, <laughs> what you reveal is, is going to heal. Yeah. So you need to reveal things so you can heal, but nobody wants to reveal anything. Nobody wants to reveal their truth. Nobody wants to even reveal their healthy jealousy, as you put it, because it starts to become possessive. People are per, per, uh, being more possessive of people because I don't want to let you go. I don't want anybody well, else to have you. Right, but what? why is the reason? Why do you think that's the case? Like, why does somebody really want to possess somebody? What's at the core of that? Maybe not being alone. Okay, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then it's almost like I've been with so you. So, alone? I, yeah, alone, um, knowing who you are. Knowing that you get me in a sense, I might be crazy, but you still love this crazy. I love that crazy. So it can be a lot of factors, but it's just a factor of why wanting to start over with somebody else. Well, sometimes, okay, there's, this is another view that's out there, okay, in, in evolutionary type philosophies, is that um, whenever there's... We all do this. Every society does this. <laughs> and it, it may be subconscious, but it's a mate valuation. Okay, so a mate valuation is um, I consider myself an eight. And if you're an eight, then we're going to click. Okay, yeah. if I'm an eight and you're a four, I don't know. I don't think we're going to click. Okay, so sometimes what will happen is a mate will actually like maybe lose their job or you know, get into some trouble or something like that. And they've kind of in your eyes lost their valuation. So now because you're an eight, they're a four, you're not clicking anymore. And so what happens is an eight is going to look for another eight. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Which basically means they're, it's almost time to mate swap. Okay. But everybody's out here thinking they're eights when they're really fives and sixes. And then it's almost like you can't even use seven because seven is just a number that <laughs> is saying we're all average, but no one wants to be average. Everybody's saying they're above average. Everybody wants to be a yeah, nine. Everybody wants to be a nine. Nobody wants to be a three. No. <laughs> no. I used to say I'm a five because that's right in between. That's between good and bad. Like, but that's just being realistic. That's being open and honest with yourself, and that's the problem. Nobody wants to be honest with yourself because they're jealous of the fact, they're jealous of their own self that say, hey, if I'm saying I'm an eight or a six, then someone's going to perceive me as lower than that. So I'm going to get jealous at what they're saying about me, that they're trying to poke fun at me because I'm thinking I'm above average than the next person. <laughs> like, and I'll give you a perfect example. Okay, okay. And right. so... Rest in peace. He, I liked him. I enjoyed him. Kevin Samuels, when he used, when he did his interviews, he would ask, uh, "What do you rate yourself from one to ten? And you cannot say seven. Okay. Yes. And then they would still put themselves at an eight. They would, and half of them don't even look eight. They don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I swear to God, I'm, and I'm not being ridiculed of anybody. Everybody is beautiful in their own way. Everybody is. But you've got to be realistic. You've got to set realistic expectations and values on yourself to where you know it's like, if I tell you I'm a six, I believe it because I'm a six. There's a lot of things I can work on when it comes to this beautiful thing, but still I'm real about it. I know me, uh, my mental is a six, my body is a six, and I'm fine with that. But you still got other people who 
are built like sack of laundries and they're saying they're eights. Like, I don't get it. <laughs> well, it's not more so sometimes what they say. I would say it's more um, what happens is there's more of an energetic matching that's going on there. So, you know, I, it, and the valuation is something that we really don't even do necessarily consciously, but it just kind of happens within us where we kind of lose the attraction for somebody. Um, and, and so for scientists, the best way to do it is to call it a mate valuation. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So um, if, we, if we look at it that way, it's really, you know, something that, that's just shifting in the, in the relationship where you may not be uh, ideal for each other anymore. And that's okay. That's what people reali don't realize is it's okay to allow relationships to change. Relationships are always evolving. And that's why I have the name that I do, relations relationshipsevolving.com. Make sure you go follow her on Facebook. <laughs> But it's for women only. I might no, have my Facebook group. That's my Facebook group, okay? <laughs> I am not discluding men, all <laughs> right? Is, is, remember, in the episode, second episode we did, men are trying to sneak in there, but she flags them out. So, <laughs> I do, I do. Because my group nice is for women. Wig, you can put a nice little wig, but like, she'll still see it through. So. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Hey, 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 we're trying to expose people, especially you. Okay? Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that, Will. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. But no, no, I'm go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. So really, you know, what it's coming down to is uh, with jealousy, and, and this is my point that I really want to get across to whoever is listening and, and to your audience. Um, you know, we kind of accept like jealousy is just something that's there. Like, you, you know, you can't touch my husband, you can't touch my wife um, because I own them. It's just like this whole thing that kind of society has thrown out there. But if you actually are willing to say with your partner, um, you know what, I want a relationship for truth. I want this to help me grow in life. Mm -hmm. Then every time you feel that emotion coming up, you're gonna be able to discuss it and you're gonna find out where's the layers at. Is it guilt? Is it shame? Is it um, ownership? You know, like what piece of the onion is it that's ready to be peeled back in that moment? And when you can sit there and you can discuss it and talk about it, then you become aware to really what's going on and to the way you're behaving, which is going to start um, pushing it more into compersion. And I think we talked about compersion a little bit on the last episode. A little bit, a little bit not much. But. So, but I want I do want to clear that up for this episode. Please so, please compersion please. is actually this vicarious joy that you really do in, uh, like, or you're totally okay with your partner having sex with somebody else because what you do is you have. Uh, a total unconditional love that you want the best for them. Okay. Even if she gets pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, that, when you said that, I'm like, well, it ain't mine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, we got we got the behind the scenes crowd laughing now. We got everybody. <laughs> sarcasm, orgasm, people. You know that's how we do it. He's the sarcasm, I'm the orgasm. What can I say? <laughs> Let's get back. Come no, on. so so no, compersion is just this space where. Um, you can look across the room and your spouse is having sex with somebody else and you could be happy for them because they're happy. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if it's not sex and it's something else, it's some kind of hobby or whatever it is. And because sometimes we get jealous of what they do or envious of what they're doing because it doesn't involve us. But when you can turn that around and you can say, you know what, I want the best for you, baby. I want you to have your most fantastic life. And... Whatever is going to make you happy is going to make me happy. 
Like, is that not a more freeing space to live in? Yes, it is. But are you saying it with honesty or are you saying it with honesty and just a little bit of jealousy? There's all, you know what? You're going to kind of flex between them. I have a lot of compersion. It's, I, for whatever reason, I'm built that way. So it, it, there's a lot, but there are some things and some things that I've gotten very jealous and envious of in the work world, not around sex, but more so in like a personal type thing. Mm -hmm. So there's still, I mean, it's for all of us. It's just one of those emotions that we, we have the opportunity to feel and allow into our lives to show us different aspects of ourselves. Okay. I get it. And if you're willing to take those aspects in and, you know, look at them and become aware of them, you've just created another little piece of freedom. You're getting closer to the core where you're really going to find that freedom. Sounds like your level of compersion is very big. So. <laughs> it's okay. Everybody can do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I'm not going to judge you. You just, you do how you want to. So, um, just, so let me ask you this before we get out of here. In the realm of jealousy, is there a way that you could just almost be able to car car compartmentalize it to where it doesn't affect you? In a relationship sense, of course. Um, well, compartmentalizing kind of means you're going to stuff your emotion. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Never a good idea. Okay. okay. Then so skip that, people. That's <laughs> good. I, I, I don't recommend that one, okay? Um, because what happens when we start stuffing emotions, that's where disease actually comes from. Uh -huh. Like, because we're, we're storing that stuff in our bodies. And people wonder why they get cancer or they get sick or, you know, all these different things. Um, it's because we're, we're suppressing actually feeling things. And that's one of the things I work with my clients is how to process emotions and how to feel things so that they're not overwhelming you, but that you can actually feel them. And a lot of times, I don't know if you know this people, but if you just feel something for like 90 seconds, like you drop in and into your body, you find where it's at in your body. It might be your stomach, it might be your heart, it might be, your body will tell you. When you do drop in and you feel that, most of the time it's gone in 90 seconds. Nobody, but people are so conditioned to push it away and ignore it because they don't wanna feel it because it's perceived as scary. I don't know because I've been trying to fill my paycheck for a long time and since it's direct deposit, I just can't. <laughs> it's not there. This is not there. This is the ethereal. <laughs> it really is. Okay, we got to really work on that one, babe. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand what you're saying in a whole when it comes to jealousy and we all have our jealous points. Yeah. Our faults. Um, they're not false. Okay. okay. Let's not they're make not it. Let's not make everybody. It's not wrong. Okay. No. It's just, Hey, this is something showing you. Let's, let's get a different way of functioning in life. Yeah. But it's actually a gift. What society teaches like, it's okay to be jealous of that bitch or that hoe or that nigga or whoever, mm -hmm. however you want to categorize it. But we're taught that jealousy can be a good thing and can fuel fuel us but sometimes that same fuel that's fueling us will burn you yep it'll create a fire it will and it'll create a fire that's going to backfire on you yeah so it's like well what the hell did i just do what did i put my energy <laughs> exactly. into exactly and that's why that's why i'm out here talking about it because uh, that is one way to do it and get consumed by it. Yes. And then what happens? You usually end up splitting up because you let it consume the whole entire relationship. Okay. Well, and so if that's what you desire, if that's what you really want, you can have that experience, right? Mm -hmm. But there's other ways to experience it. Yeah. People, we're going to do a part four. and It's going to be toxicity because that's where I feel like this is going. I really do, because we have jealousy. Now we need to talk about toxic people. It's, just, <laughs> it's out there. And who better than our relationship coach, Miss Kale? <laughs> so, um, just so to wrap it up, in a sense, when it comes to facing jealousy and dealing with it, what is the best best method? You know, I feel that the best method is really to drop into yourself. 
and and begin to ask yourself like why it's there mm -hmm. you know and, and start digging into you know what is this why why do i want to possess somebody or why do i want to hold on to them so tight that i like squeeze and suffocate them like is it because i feel that my safety and security is at play you know sometimes that's it you know there will be you know that whole idea of oh my gosh you know if this happens then i i I won't have my house or I won't have this or, you know, so it could just be a safety and security thing. It could be a self-worth thing. Um, it is so many different things that could be happening. And, and that's where once you start questioning it and why it's there, then you get to reveal it, which means you get to heal it. Interesting. 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 <laughs> you know what, you always open my eyes to something new and, um, something new and my wheels are spinning to where that provoking words, yeah there you go Stop <laughs> i was trying to get it but i'm like what is it what is it? i can't figure it out <laughs> but the words you use what perversion conversion compersion compersion <laughs> not perversion okay people not <laughs> not perversion compersion okay <laughs> yes conversion <laughs> conversion that's what i said conversion <laughs> <laughs> get it straight man <laughs> Hey, 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 I'm drinking on set, okay? Give me some leeway. But yes, conversion. Yes, you opened my eyes to that because we did speak about it last time, but we didn't get into it. So thank you for clearing that up. You're welcome. Because I was going to bring it up. I was just going to wait, but trying to interject it, it's like, I don't know when to ask. So, <laughs> it's all good. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I know you do. So if people, once again, do want to reach out to you and, you know, talk with you, book a session with you how can they reach you so the easiest way to book a call is to go to relationships evolving.com I do have a free 20 minute uh, it, it kind of considered a discovery call just to see hey are we each other's jam can I help you with what you're working through or, or what's going on in your life um, again I deal with mostly non-traditional relationships so those people that are wanting to explore an open relationship it could be polyamory it could be swinging or the lifestyle that we've been talking about. Yes. Um, you know, so there's all different ways that people can create these different relationships within themselves to really enjoy life. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's non-traditional relationships. And I want people to understand too, I, I deal with monogamous people also because monogamy is a sacred path just as much as polyamory or the lifestyle. It's really what you choose and if you're following it with your authentic self and with your heart. Okay. So, so that's one way. So that, that's a way to book a call. I am on Facebook under Gail Lynn. Or you can find me at uh, Relationships Evolving with Gail Lynn on my business page. And I do have my women's group. All women, no men. <laughs> Relationships Evolving, women supporting women. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for doing this. I was, I'm was, i so glad that we got to do this live and in person. Um, it makes so much more for a conversation that we've had rather than, you know, computer and remote. Because it was, it was a little weird sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is definitely more fun. Yes, it definitely is. So thank you so much for welcoming me to the hive where we're at, shooting on location. So thank you, Gail. I appreciate it. I You're really welcome. Do. Yes, and compersion, wherever the hell that is, like I said, just be careful. It's not your baby. So. <laughs> <laughs> so this has been another episode of sarcasm and orgasm make sure that you go look my house miss gail lynn on facebook everywhere check her website out book a session if you you know want to get your kink on or freak on whichever it is it doesn't matter it's up to you <laughs> so make sure you like comment subscribe to the channel right down below also make sure that you go support the the merch channel that I have created, Sarcasm Orgasm, that will be down below as well. So you can get your t-shirt for $20. It's not that much. It's like two cups of coffee. You don't need it. You need a t-shirt. All right? Sarcasm and Orgasm. So thank you so much for watching and listening. I am Will. And I will talk to you all soon.